Bangor. From the great north woods to the Rock Bomb Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at FoxBangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello, everyone. Today on Good Morning Maine, the state of Maine cracks down on the use of TikTok on state-owned devices. Also, a call for legislation that would allow Mainers to bring their vehicles to the repair shops of their choice. And Bangor launches a new school alert system that can call for help with a push of the button. We'll tell you about all those stories and much more coming up. Hello, everyone. I'm Craig Colson. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Friday. Uh, uh, my partner in crime, Emma Smith, has the day off, uh, but we will hear from her a little later on in the broadcast. We're going to turn our attention first to that storm. A winter storm has arrived on our doorsteps today, a storm that's expected to bring significant snowfall to much of the state. This is what it looks like right now on the banks of, uh, actually, on on uh, up in Dover Foxcroft. This is a camera set up outside the Center Theater there. It was snowing quite steady there earlier. It looks like it's still coming down a little bit, um, but it's quieted down just a bit. We are expecting to see another big band of snow coming up later on in the day, so they can expect to see even more snow there in Dover Foxcroft. It appears the Bangor region will be picking up a little more snow than was expected earlier this week, perhaps as much as a half a foot or snow. Southern main areas can expect to receive even more snow today. I was just talking with somebody down on the coast, too. And they're not really seeing a lot of snow down east right now, but they'll see a little bit of snow as the day rolls along. For more on what we can expect, let's turn things over to Devin Biggs for a first look at our forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater area. All right, let's get things rolling out there this morning. We have winter storm warnings in effect until later this afternoon at about 5 o'clock or so. Same with the winter weather advisories. Further off towards the north, accumulating snow expected that could reach up to 4 to 8 inches in a few spots with the higher totals further off towards the south with the warnings around and just a little bit less further off towards the north. Pull those off real quick. We also have a small craft advisory that will linger until 7 a.m. Kind of stayed in the obvious. Sarah's will be dealing with some wind as a result. Not going to help to stir up the ocean yet again as the system continues to move through. Here's the general idea this morning. The first round of snow is already moving through, but more development right behind it, though. And with all this additional development, that's why we're thinking a lot more snowfall with that range of 4 to 8 inches altogether. But 3 to 5 inches of that will fall today. Let's zoom things out right now. This is the general idea right now. What we're seeing, a little bit more action off toward the west, so it might take a bit to get this through before things start to calm down later on. Here's future cast for today. The snow will continue through the afternoon period, starting to calm down later tonight, and even starting to clear out as we head towards early Saturday morning. Still a few clouds can be ruled out in a few spots. Here's our only forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. Notice it will be breezy at times with winds up to 13, even 14 miles per hour, with the snow falling and temperatures in the upper 20s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. We'll see you later on. The Maine Emergency Management Agency is tracking the storm, and the agency also has some important reminders for all of us. They say if the power does go out, Mainers are reminded to make sure alternate heating and power sources are in good working condition and have been installed properly. MEMA Public Information Officer Vanessa Corson says anyone that will be driving today should also allow extra time, and travelers should let someone know where they're going before they do hit the road. Storm, we're not so concerned about power outages or down tree limbs. In this case, we're more concerned about the commute. So first, you need to determine, is it worth leaving the house? You need to heed the warning of your local authorities. If you have a planned obligation, call ahead and see if it's even happening. If it is, then determine your risk. Is it worth going? Put out a list of things that everyone should have in their vehicles, emergency kits. The list includes a flashlight with batteries, a first aid kit, ice scraper and a shovel, a bag of kitty litter to help with traction if you do get stuck, and a set of jumper cables is also a good idea. The emergency kit should also include some water, warm clothing or a blanket, a cell phone charger, tool kit, and reflective triangles or a flare to signal your help, signal for help if you need it. You can also visit MEMA's website to find a list of municipal warming centers and other important storm safety information. By the way, most schools are closed today, a lot of offices too, so if you do head out, like Vanessa said, you may want to call ahead to make sure that wherever you're planning to go is still open. 
Well, an update now on the potential whereabouts of Graham Lacker, who has now been missing since he walked out of the Dorothea Dick Psychiatric Center in Bangor back in June. A post on the Facebook page, Missing Graham Lacker, states that there have been two possible sightings of the missing man this month. According to the post, a woman who knew Graham from a few years ago reported that she thought she saw him crossing the Gardner Randolph Bridge in early January. Another man reported seeing him crossing the bridge into Gardner around the same time. Family members and volunteer searchers have been looking around that area, including the old narrow gauge walking trail in Randolph. For more information or to report any potential sightings yourself, you can go to the Facebook page, Missing Graham Lacker. The state of Maine has banned the use of TikTok on executive branch state-owned devices. Maine joins an ever-growing list of states that have banned the app owned by Chinese company ByteDance from government devices. The federal government has also banned the use of TikTok on all federal government devices. Maine Information Technology says the service could pose a serious threat to the state's network infrastructure. Members of Maine's exec executive branch have been ordered to remove it from all state-owned devices that connect to that state network. That also applies to personally-owned devices that also connect to that network. A group of Maine repair shop owners delivered signatures to the Secretary of State's office to get the right-to-repair referendum on the ballot in 2023. Devin Dagnall with that story. This right to repair bill is not just for the independent repair shops, it's also for the do-it-yourselfers out there. A group of Maine independent repair shop owners, employees and general supporters submitted over 70,000 signatures for Maine's right to repair bill. In order to update the law for new technology, we passed a referendum in Massachusetts last two years ago and uh, are looking to do that in, in Maine to ensure that consumers have the ability to take their car where they choose for their repairs. Tommy Hickey, the director of the Right to Repair Coalition, says that automotive companies have put measures in place for the computers in new vehicles that make it so only dealerships and the car manufacturers can access diagnostics that will allow them to make repairs. The Right to Repair bill is being introduced as a way to level the playing field and make it so independent repair shops can also access that information. It's frustrating. It's frustrating for uh, technicians all across the state and if you talk to anyone who's running a shop or any technician who's trying to fix vehicles today as they get to these newer and newer vehicles it becomes harder and harder to get the information they need in order to help customers. According to Tim Winkler, the president and CEO of VIP Tires and Service, the movement has received overwhelming support from the public, and he expects the same support if the bill makes it to the ballot in November. We're going to work through the legislative process. As you know, we have about seven months to uh, educate those folks. We hope they pass it, um, and if not, we're ready to take this to the ballot in 2023. In Augusta, Devin Dagnall for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. In other news, the federal government has announced it will move forward with reviewing plans for the nation's first floating offshore wind research array located in the Gulf of Maine. It features patented technology developed by the University of Maine. The floating offshore wind research array is proposed to include 10 to 12 turbines on semi-submersible floating concrete platforms. A statement says the array will foster cutting-edge research on how floating offshore wind interacts with the marine environment, fishing industry, shipping, and navigation. Natural Resources Council of Maine Climate Clean Energy Director Jack Shapiro says, quote, using technology built right here in Maine and guided by the best available research and data, we can generate clean, reliable electricity, create thousands of good-paying jobs for Maine people, and protect the Gulf of Maine's unique ecosystem and the people and wildlife that depend on it. Well, the time now is 8.09. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, the Bangor School System installs a new alert system for the safety of teachers and students. But first, another check of that weather forecast. We can expect snow heavy at times throughout the day today. It will be breezy with highs near 35 degrees. Tonight, the snow will eventually come to an end with lows dropping down to 23. Tomorrow, a breezy and sunny day. A good day to clean up after all this snow. The highs on Saturday, 29 degrees. Chevy take you this year. Anywhere. Find new experiences. Find new roads. 
current qualified lessees can get this Equinox for $269 a month or get $1,750 total cash allowance on all 2023 Equinox models. Pond Hill Farms in Brooks, Maine offers 100% grass-fed beef in a variety of ways. Choose between individual cuts that are state inspected and ready to pop in your fridge or freezer. If you're looking to stock up, Pond Hill Farms offer the option to purchase hanging weight by quarter, half, or whole. We also offer live cattle if you're looking to grow your own herd. Pond Hill Farms also offer rental cottages with spectacular views of the farm and the main outdoors. Whether you're looking for fresh Maine meat or a gorgeous place to vacation, Pond Hill Farms is the place to be. When Natural Living Center wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Natural Living Center offers natural groceries, organic produce, the largest selection of supplements in the area, gluten-free products, and more for your health. Sometimes big truck accidents can result in big case settlements. These are just some of the big case results I've fought to get my clients. If you've been hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Puzzles are easy. Family, that's a real challenge. I think we're all going in the right direction. Then they twist the opposite way. I go out on my own, and then they come around again. It happens rarely, but every once in a while, we all go where we're supposed to go. And everything clicks into place. Young Sheldon, weekdays at 6 on Fox 22. Welcome back, everyone. Bangor schools are introducing a new emergency alert system in an effort to keep teachers and students safe. David Ledford as the explains. Latest step, as the latest step in ongoing safety efforts, the Bangor School Department announced the launch of a new emergency alert system. The department partnered with Centegix, an incident response group, to provide all staff at each of the schools in the department with wearable badges that can alert police faster than a 911 call. When a staff member activates their badge, strobe lights throughout the schools change color and an intercom message is played to alert everyone in the building. Bangor students have shared how they feel about the recent change. Obviously it's not something we ever want to have to use, but knowing that it's there if it were ever necessary is really important. Speaking for me and all of my classmates, we're just really grateful to have this new security system to keep us safe at school. The Bangor School Department is the first in the state to implement this system. According to Ray Finney, the Director of Community Relations and Safety for the Bangor School Department, this new system is essential for preventing school incidents. Each time that there's a school shooting, uh, communities always go into the grieving process. And anything that we can do to help minimize the effects of those types of violence in our schools are things that we see beneficial. Finney says the badges are connected to sensors throughout the buildings, which allow police to respond within one and a half to three minutes, all with the press of a button. According to Superintendent James Tager, the department spent around $409,000 for a five-year contract with Centegix. But the improved safety that comes with that cost is priceless. The cost to me, you know, obviously we have school budgets, but I think the cost to me for peace of mind was worth every cent that we're paying. In Bangor, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A uh, chilly tradition is coming back to Camp Capella. The camp will once again host its annual Polar Dip next month on February 25th at Phillips Lake in Dedham. The event is the biggest fundraiser of the year for the nonprofit summer camp, which serves those with disabilities from all around the state. Executive Director Melanie Dresser says all proceeds go directly to a scholarship for campers who can't afford to pay and expressed her gratitude for campers and donors. Best job I've ever had. I have never in my life had a job that gave as much back to me as these campers give to me every single time I go to work. They make it so much more fun um, over the course of the year, raising the money to make sure that they can come next year. Well, this year the day will be filled with prizes, food, and even a hot tub for those brave enough to jump into the icy waters. People are also encouraged to participate virtually by recording a video of themselves doing anything from dumping ice water over their heads to rolling around in the snow. For registration information, you can visit campcapella.org. Well, the time now is 814. Coming up after the break, a new restaurant is coming to Ellsworth that will fire up the community. Plus your national news and a special interview on this year's pond hockey games. 
That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Does your vehicle need a little more work? Have an odd sound coming from somewhere? Bring it over to Jackson's Automotive in Old Town. We have the best technicians and offer a fair price. We also accept all aftermarket protection plans. Now, if you're unable to drive your vehicle to us, we can help you get it here. Also, if you'd like to protect your vehicle for years to come, we offer Wool Wax Undercarriage Protection. We're located at 546 Main Street in Old Town. Give us a call at 827-2676. Fear, pain, and anxiety are all feelings associated with dental treatments, but it doesn't have to be that way. Dental lasers offer a way to remove tooth decay without using the dental drill. In fact, we do most dental fillings here at Twin City Dental without numbing, so no needle. And for treatments like root canals or having many teeth extracted, we also provide IV sedation. So call Twin City Dental for your next dentist appointment. We answered some questions on Angie. Contractors pop up on your screen. You can read other people's experiences. To me, Angie is a time saver. I scheduled it right then and there. Get started at Angie.com today. When Booth Electric and United Energy want to know the local forecast, they log on to FoxBangor.com. Stay in your comfort zone with Booth Electric and United Energy, Maine's trusted heat pump and electrical company. Harvey High is now in session. Today's subjects, biology. Same an animal with the long neck. Dinosaur, long neck, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you something. When's the last time you've seen one? Anatomy. Name a part of Steve Harvey that a woman might want to kiss. Your six pack. The six pack? Does she know who Steve Harvey is? <laughs> you got to dig for it, but it's in there. Get School with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. If you live or shop in the Ellsworth area, a new place to dine is set to open. Crazy Sumo, a hibachi-style restaurant, has taken over where Denny's used to be located. They're now pl they were planning to have an invite-only soft opening last night, and they have been training staff and doing finishing touches all week long. Steaks will be the main focus of the menu, but will also feature seafood, vegetarian, and sushi items as well. The owners tell us they're planning for their grand opening to take place sometime next week. Bangor Humane Society needs the public's help in keeping up with the demands of their operation during the chilly winter months. Bangor Humane says their current level of staffing, coupled with the need to frequently launder bedding items for health and hygiene purposes, means they have a serious need for more blankets. They say they don't have enough staff to keep up with the always high level of laundry and also frequently need to throw bedding out altogether. Staff says they run through supplies very quickly. The weather is colder and of course kennels are largely cement for the dogs and even though we keep the building as warm as we can, cement gets cold and especially for our older dogs or dogs that maybe are recovering from surgical procedures, they need to be warm and cozy. So this is the time when we go through lots of blankets. Oh, Catherine says they are also in always need of both dog and cat toys and there's an increased need for canned cat and dog food as well. You can make a donation through the website, or you can simply drop off donations outside the shelter, which is right off Mount Hope Avenue here in Bangor. Well, the time now is 818. Time to get a full look at our weather forecast. Here's Devin. And thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater area. Alrighty, here we go. Winter storm warnings are up in the pink, lasting until about 5 o'clock or so. We'll pull this map further off towards the west. And that's going to be the general idea, too. Some areas up until about 7 o'clock or so. But most of us will be up until about 5 o'clock tonight with most of our winter storm warnings and the winter weather advisories as well. With accumulating snow being a big issue here, while further down toward the south, you see there's another advisory up. That right there is a small crack. 
craft advisory until about 7 a.m. as we head towards your Saturday. So plenty of things we're watching with the snow and, of course, the wind. And we're watching snow moving through right now. It looks like a dry slot trying to sneak in from earlier this morning. We're not done with it. Look at all the snow further off towards the south and west. We'll throw the radar into motion now. So we've had snow already falling and accumulating this morning. But it looks like another wave is starting to build in now from the southwest going toward the north and east. That'll give us more snowfall as the day progresses on, which is, which is why we're thinking about four to eight inches before we're all finished up. Let's throw everything together here. And you can see the development a little bit more clearly as all this is tracking from the west going toward the east and a little bit off towards the north as well with some of that snow. A little bit more development is saw toward the west with another boundary here. And that could lead to more snow moving in. Again, that's the general idea on why we're thinking four to eight inches now with the snowfall. So traffic may be a little bit messy from time to time as things do continue to move through. Here's future cast for today. The snow will continue pretty much all day long until the afternoon or evening time frame. By 7 o'clock, things are starting to taper off and the clouds start to break up as well as we head towards Saturday morning. Maybe a few passing clouds still. But overall, keep the sunglasses handy. You'll need them with a lot of sunshine. Just a few passing clouds, maybe some clouds and perhaps a little bit of fog in a few spots as we head towards Saturday night and even in a parts of Sunday morning. So otherwise, here's a general idea with the so this is additional snowfall on top of what's already fallen, an additional three to four inches before we're all finished up for the rest of the day with the snowfall. Wave heights are up as well at around five to seven feet, according to some of the buoys. Hence why we do have a small crowd advisory in effect at this time. Your forecast for today, upper 20 is snow likely. An additional three to five inches cannot be ruled out overall. The north wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. All right, later on tonight, 13 degrees of snow showers early, then becoming partly cloudy late. North wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. All right, for tomorrow, upper 20s, mostly sunny. The north wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour in a few areas. All right, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by the more true team already so it'll be mostly sunny on saturday again highs in the upper 20s with more clouds moving in by sunday highs in the lower 30s notice it cools off saturday night as well mid 30s by monday with rain and snow showers on the way and partly cloudy tuesday highs in the mid 30s So you're 45. That's the perfect age to see some old friends, explore new worlds, and to start screening for colon cancer. Yep, with colon cancer rising in adults under 50, the American Cancer Society recommends starting to screen earlier at age 45. I'm Cologuard, a non-invasive way to screen at home on your schedule, and I find 92% of colon cancers. I'm for people 45 plus at average risk for colon cancer, not high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider if Cologuard is right for you. BuyAToyota.com is Toyota's official website for deals. With the most comprehensive selection of Toyota offers available, you'll see every official Toyota deal out there, including offers not seen on TV. Plus, you can search inventory and get a free independent trade-in value. Right now, you could save with 3.99% financing on an all-wheel drive Camry. And every Camry comes with two years no-cost maintenance and more. BuyAToyota.com, when you officially want the best deal. Toyota, let's go places. Before and bath fitter. Before and bath fitter. If you have a before bath, now's the time to call bath fitter to get a beautiful after. With our unique tub over tub process, there's no mess or stress. Spend smart on a beautiful new bath done right, backed by a lifetime warranty. Join over 2 million happy customers who know it just fits. Bath fitter. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials, with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground round. Odlin Road, Bangor. Oh, um, a, sh a shower, street light. Street light is correct, yes, yes. Pictionary brings that doodle drama. Oh. Five days a week. Weekdays at 10 on Fox 22. This morning, President Joe Biden addressing the classified documents found at his private home and office for the first time since a special counsel was appointed to look into the case. It comes as House Republicans are ramping up their own investigations into those Biden documents, and the White House is blasting their inquiries as politically motivated. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest. We found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. 
For the first time since a special counsel was appointed to look into the classified documents found at his home and office, President Biden addressing the investigation while surveying storm damage in California. We have a serious problem here we're talking about. We're talking about what's going on and the American people don't quite understand why you don't ask me questions about that. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Thank you. The president's comments in line with what his White House is saying, promising to cooperate with newly appointed special counsel Robert Hur's investigation. But the administration also blasting Republican-led inquiries into the documents in Congress as politically motivated. Are you satisfied with the way your team is handling the documents? House Oversight Committee Chair James Comer now zeroing in on the Penn Biden Center, the office in Washington where the first pages of classified documents were discovered. The committee probing their donors and requesting the center's visitors' logs. Republicans also vowing to look into the administration's transparency and why the initial discovery of classified documents in November was first made public in January after the midterm elections. And this is why there's such hypocrisy behind the Bidens. Once again, something big that comes forward prior to an election where they kind of keep it quiet, where the American public could actually have a say. Now, the White House is hitting back, saying Republicans showed little interest in investigating the reams of classified documents seized by the FBI at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago. That case has its own special counsel, which is proceeding with its investigation. And that was Jay O'Brien reporting. In other news, people around the world are remembering one of the world's most talented musicians from the folk rock era. David Crosby has died at the age of 81, leaving behind a legacy that has influenced generations of singers and songwriters. Crosby was first introduced to the world as a member of the Birds, and then later as a member of Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. He was known to butt heads with his bandmates from time to time, but he's being remembered for his music. Former band member Graham Nash said the pure joy of making music with Crosby was what mattered the most. Stephen Stills also released a statement saying Crosby was, without a doubt, a giant of a musician and his harmonic sensibilities were nothing short of genius. Crosby was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, once for the Birds and then six years later with Crosby, Stills and Nash. Well, actor and producer Alec Baldwin is facing an involuntary manslaughter charge over the death of a cinematographer on a movie set back in October of 2021. Baldwin was pointing a prop pistol at Helena Hutchins during a rehearsal when that gun went off. Fox's Matt Finn is in Los Angeles with more. It went across her chest. Today, a New Mexico district attorney announcing she will file two involuntary manslaughter charges against Alec Baldwin and Russ armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. Mr. Baldwin had a duty at, his, at the base level to never hold a gun and point it at a person while pulling the trigger. But he also had a duty um, as an actor and a producer on that set to have the bullets checked or to check them himself to make sure that they weren't live. The special prosecutor tells Fox News that safety on the 2021 New Mexico set was loose and reckless with accidental gun discharges and that Baldwin did pull the trigger on the gun he fired, a claim he denies. Baldwin faces up to six and a half years in prison if convicted on the stronger involuntary manslaughter charge that carries an enhanced sentence. His attorney responding, quote, this decision distorts Helena Hutchins' tragic death and represents a terrible miscarriage of justice. Mr. Baldwin had no reason to believe there was a live bullet in the gun or anywhere on the movie set. He relied on the professionals with whom he worked who assured him the gun did not have live rounds. Gutierrez Reed, who faces the same prison time, was reportedly inexperienced and overwhelmed. Her attorney telling Fox, Hannah is and always has been very emotional and sad about this tragic accident, but she did not commit involuntary manslaughter. Helena Hutchins' family is thanking New Mexico authorities, writing, Our independent investigation also supports that charges are warranted. It is a comfort to the family that in New Mexico, no one is above the law. In Los Angeles, Matt Finn, Fox News. And still to come on the second half of our show, hockey fans are hoping for colder weather as they prepare for annual pond hockey games. We'll have an interview with one of the organizers. And later, a little girl from Lemoyne now has the permit needed to adopt a pet unicorn. We'll have that story and more as Good Morning Maine continues. 
are some things that go better together. Hey. Like your workplace benefits and retirement savings. With Voya, considering all your financial choices together can help you be better prepared for unexpected events for a brighter financial future. Thanks. Ah, pretzel and mustard. Another great combo. Voya! Voya. Well planned, well invested, well protected. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Coastal Auto Parts, Cold Brook Mitsubishi, Family Pet Connection, Gray Wolf Auto LLC, The Bankery and Skowhegan Florist, and Unwind. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Well, today is Friday, January 20th, 2023. It's also National Cheese Lovers Day, a day to celebrate cheese in all its wonderful forms. Cheese has become a multi-billion dollar industry. In fact, one-third of all the milk produced in the U.S. goes into cheese production. On this day in history, back in 1945, Franklin Delano Roosevelt became the first U.S. president to be sworn into office in January. It was the second of his four inaugurations. His first was held four years earlier in March. In 1981, the Iran hostage crisis ended with the release of 52 Americans who had been held hostage for 15 months. And going way back to 1892, the first official basketball game was played in Springfield, Massachusetts, by YMCA students of the game's inventor, James Naismith. Today's birthdays include actor Rain Wilson, who is 56 years old. He's best known for playing Dwight Schrute on television's The Office. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin is 92 years old. Singer Paul Stanley from the rock group Kiss is 70. And President Trump's former spokesperson, Kellyanne Conway, is 55 years old. Happy birthday to all of them. All right, before we get into weather, let's check out that camera from Dover Foxcroft one last time if we can. It looks kind of quiet there in Dover right now, although you can tell that the road is pretty covered with slush. Still lots of people out on the roadways. As we heard earlier, it looks like well, we will have another band of snow coming through the area, so it's not done yet. For more on what we can expect, let's turn things over to Devin Biggs. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater area. All right, let's get things rolling out there this morning. We have winter storm warnings in effect until later this afternoon at about 5 o'clock or so. Same with the winter weather advisories. Further off towards the north, accumulating snow expected that could reach up to 4 to 8 inches in a few spots with the higher totals further off towards the south with the warnings around and just a little bit less further off towards the north. Pull those off real quick. We also have a small craft advisory that will linger until 7 a.m. Kind of stayed in the obvious. Sarah's will be dealing with some wind as a result. Not going to help to stir up the ocean yet again as the system continues to move through. Here's the general idea this morning. The first round of snow is already moving through, but more development right behind it, though. And with all this additional development, that's why we're thinking a lot more snowfall with that range of 4 to 8 inches altogether. But 3 to 5 inches of that will fall today. Let's zoom things out right now. This is the general idea right now. What we're seeing, a little bit more action off toward the west, so it might take a bit to get this through before things start to calm down later on. Here's future cast for today. The snow will continue through the afternoon period, starting to calm down later tonight, and even starting to clear out as we head towards early Saturday morning. Still a few clouds can be ruled out in a few spots. Here's our only forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. Notice it will be breezy at times with winds up to 13, even 14 miles per hour. With the snow falling and temperatures in the upper 20s, your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you very much, Devin. Over the next few minutes, we'll be taking a look at this week's community calendar. Still lots of events being held around the area.
by the way, you may want to call ahead about any of those events happening today just to make sure they're still happening. When we come back, Tyler Cruz will have all the day's sports news. We'll also be talking pond hockey. Don't go away. It's time to start planning that new home or garage you've been thinking about. Hammond Lumber Company is here to help, offering complete building packages with everything you need. With several options on their website and thousands of unique plans in their in-house drawing catalog. Hammond will help you make your dreams a reality. Choose your materials from Hammond's extensive showroom displays. And Hammond will deliver your order from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Start planning your new home or garage at Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. It's your journey. Own every mile in an available H-Track all-wheel drive Hyundai SUV. Lease an all-wheel drive 2023 Tucson for $239 a month or get 2.9% APR for 60 months. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens signed the contract for their Royal Rumble match. An all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, tonight on Fox. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start on the hardwood. Over at Husson, South Portland native Scott Lewis has just been named the NAC Player of the Week after missing a year due to an injury after a car accident left him needing major back surgery. Here is his comeback story. Every game, like, I'm blessed to play every game. Um, and I come into the mindset, like, I, I'm just happy to be here. Well, it's an amazing story. I mean, in the history of Husson that I've been here, I, I can't think of a, a more pleasing story. Just one year ago, Husson Jr. and South Portland native Scott Lewis had no idea if he'd ever play basketball again. Now. He's the North Atlantic Conference's Player of the Week. There was for sure a lot of doubt in my mind, um, but especially now, like, I look at myself, I'm like, I, I overcame this big, big accident, and I can do anything. After a very successful 2020 season, Lewis was in a car accident, breaking his sternum as well as three vertebrae and putting him on a long road to recover. I had to get six vertebrae fused together. The first three months, I was in a back brace, and I couldn't go anywhere unless someone took me, couldn't drive. And uh, it was an awful amount of pain. It was a journey. I mean, it was an emotional, you know, stretch there when, when the, the accident happened and we were learning about the details. The first thing is we just wanted Scott to be okay. I just told myself every day, you know, get one step closer and keep my goal in mind, come play basketball again. And he would do just that. Lewis spent the fall semester in South Portland, and then just seven months after the accident, he would start shooting again. And then he was playing again, with days off in between, less than a year after. The rehab was a lot physical, but at the same time, it was a lot mentally, because uh, it was just every day, it was just pain and just doubt that like, I'm not gonna be able to come back and play the level that I was, was playing at. And, but I think I've I've done that so far this year. But to his credit, he worked really hard. You know, he, he did what he needed to do and um, put himself in a position to be where he is. And like I said, we're really proud of him and, and, and fortunate to have him back. I, I think there's no doubt in my mind now that I can I can win more play of the weeks and we can win the championship this year.
Certainly a great story there. Wishing Scott and the Eagles luck the rest of the way. All right, let's shift now to UMaine, where Black Bear Field Hockey will be adding yet another local star to their roster this coming season. Nokomis Field Hockey standout Brianna Townsend signed her national letter of intent to play for Maine in the fall. After verbally committing in April, she officially put pen to paper Thursday at a ceremony attended by friends, family, and coaches. Townsend says she knew Maine was for her from the moment she visited the school, and the players' enthusiasm made her choice even more certain. I visited a lot of colleges, and as soon as I went to Maine, the atmosphere, welcoming team atmosphere from the team, the coaches, it just really felt like home there. Seeing the intensity of their practice and all the players excited like to be there made me excited. Townsend follows in her current head coach Shaughnessy Saucier's footsteps in playing for the Black Bears. Saucier, the former Bryant University head coach, says that her constant drive, Brianna's constant drive, makes her the perfect fit for a D1 squad like me. Brianna just has um, a no-quit attitude. Anything that she does, she does at the highest level. You need to bring as much energy as you can, and she does that every day. All right, wishing Brianna luck at Maine. Let's stay with some high school sports now, and we will head to a different type of hockey. Right now, we head to the ice up in Orono. Brewer and Old Town Orono going at it at the Alfond Black Bears. They're going to start on the move here in the first period. They have a great chance here, but it's Calvin Grass in net making the stop for the Witches. Well, a couple stops there. Brewer now, great open ice move here from Grady Van Edestein, but it's going to be Brock Parks making the save in between the poles for the Black Bears. Now the Black Bears, here they come again. Dylan Davis, look at the silky mittens there. All the oohs and ahs, but no goal. Eventually, they would break it open, though. Alex McCannell rips one into the net. That's going to beat Grass. That makes it one to nothing. And then in the second period, Brewer is going to do it, too. Cameron Dosti goes top shelf, far down. That ties it up, but OTO would come back. They win this one 6-3. to three. All right, let's go to Corinth now. Central girls hosting Madinaw Cook. And the main attraction here is Central junior Izzy Allen going for 1,000 career points in the third quarter we go. And she would do it on this three-pointer right there. Congratulations to Izzy. We're going to stay with the game right now, still in the third quarter. It's the Lynx trying to spoil the party. Lauren House goes baseline and scoops it in off the glass. Madinaw Cook down 10 in the fourth. Into the fourth, Allen gets it from her sister Mary. A little shake. Bacon bake, step back, nothing but net on the three. And then later, Mary would get her shine too. With under a minute to go, she's going to drive to the hole, lay this one up and in. Red Devils win it 62 to 47. Izzy at 34 points, and here she is on her 1,000 point mark. My brother and my sister both hit 1,000 on three pointers, so that was my plan, try to get a three pointer on 1,000. You know, I'm pumped. I'm really grateful for um, all my teammates, my coaches, my trainers. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am without them today, and uh, I'm so excited, so happy. All right, let's go up the road now. Central boys are in action. They are in Dover Foxcroft taking on Foxcroft Academy. Ponies and Red Devils will start in the first quarter. Central moving it around. Hayden Strout is going to find Benjamin Speed. He's going to nail the three ball right there. Great shot from the senior. And then it's Foxcroft. Caden Crocker running the break. He finds Jaden Richard. They connect for two. And then it's Fernando Oliveira. Strong take to the hole. And he gets this one to go for two off the glass. Nice move from the big man, and then it's going to be Richard. Turning defense into offense. Gets the steal, lays it in at the other end. The Ponies improve to 8-3. and three. They win it 67-29. to 29. All right, let's take a look at some other scores from around the area. PVHS hands Dexter their first loss. How about the Howlers? 42-31 in Class C North. In Class A boys basketball, Brewer over Nokomis in overtime, 65-61. In Class A girls, it's Nokomis over Brewer, 61-35. And then Maine losing to Vermont, 66-45. All right, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome to Kings Mountain RC and Hobby Shop in Brewer. And some call me the King. There are RC trucks, cars, crawlers, and parts aplenty. There are planes, metal detectors, and gear galore. I have decreed that all people can book birthday parties with their RC vehicles provided for all. 
We have indoor and outdoor tracks and crawling courses available. Bring yourself, your family, and friends to Kings Mountain RC and Hobby Shop, South Main Street Brewer. People today, they could spend half their lives over 50, but it's going to take some planning. What can you do for me? Make sure your money lives as long as you do. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Join today. Deny, delay, devalue. Time's on our side. It's a serious accident. Lots of medical bills, wrecked vehicles. Still, don't see a problem. It's the law offices of Joe Bornstein. And they want triple what we offered. And a fair settlement now. Triple. Call Joe. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maine lawyers working for Maine people. Let's settle this one. When the more true team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. The more true team works throughout the state of Maine with both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. How do you even begin to celebrate 200 years? The town of Milo has a few ideas. We'll share the story of Milo's bicentennial Monday on Fox 22 News at 10. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. I'm here with Patrick Gourette. He is the Maine Pond Hockey Classic Tournament Director. Pat, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me on. Of course. Do you want to talk about the tournament that's coming up? Yeah, uh, so the Maine Pond Hockey Classic is a uh, tournament we hold annually as a fundraiser for the Elf Youth and Community Center in Waterville. Mm -hmm. um, Boys and Girls Club and YMCA there. And, um, you know, uh, we have uh, tw 10 rinks that we'll set up on, a, on Mesolonsky Lake or Snow Pond. Uh, teams come from all over. We've had teams come from, a, like, uh, players come from Hawaii last year. Cool. Uh, we had a team come from Scotland once. We have uh, up the East Coast, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Do they register on their own so it can be kind of anybody? Uh, so the, normally uh, there's a team captain that registers and they would invite players. Cool. But, you know, generally it's like people that have played growing up together or yep. family that get together for the event. Um, so gotcha. it's really cool. It's a nice congregation point. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I do a golf weekend with uh, some uh, buddies every summer. And I, it's like the winter version of a golf weekend yeah. I think, for a lot of these guys. So, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it is a pond hockey tournament. Yeah. So how is this different than other hockey tournaments? Uh, so first of all, we're outside. So yep. you're uh, at the mercy of whatever the weather element is. Uh, we play on a smaller rink. It's uh, 70 by 140. So it's uh, about um, seventy percent the size of a regulation hockey rink. Um, we use box goals, so there's no goalies. We play four on four, so cool. Um, it's just it, it literally is like backyard yeah. pond hockey growing up, except for instead of shooting between two two boots or so, or a stick or something like that. You know, we got some little uh, pond hockey goals. Right. Um, that look easy to score on. Uh, there's no goalie, and they're like, ah, I can score on that. But that that one foot, it's like a one foot by six inch opening on both sides. Uh, it's harder to hit than people think. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. I'd say in a lot of cases, it's better not to have a goalie anyway, so it's a hard job. Yeah. But um, so what are the challenges you're coming up against? I know everybody's heard uh, ice derbies are being, ice fishing derbies are being canceled across the state. What challenges are you facing because of this funky weather we're having? Yeah, um, so every, every year we seem to face some kind of weather um, challenge, right? I've, I've never had a tournament in 10 years where we've had just perfect ideal weather. Um, sometimes it's a two foot snowstorm and sometimes right. it's rain. And uh, this year it's, um, it's just been so mild that there's yeah. not a really good base sheet of ice right now. So um, normally like right now we'd like to be out there doing some prep, um, yeah. but like I can't put a plow truck on the rink. I can't, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to do the stuff that we'd like to be doing right now. Um, and so again, it's, just like uh, during the games, you're at the mercy of uh, whatever the weather is. We're yep. kind of at the mercy of the weather, so uh, it's kind of uh, you know you, you have to accept what we can what we can prepare for and, and right. what we can't, uh, and you know we try to take control of the things that we can. So right now we're actually like scouting backup locations just nice. in case, you know, like uh, and you know and even then like those backup locations might not even be suitable uh, right. if we keep getting. You know, springtime weather in the middle of January, then right. it's going to be really hard to hold the event. Absolutely. Um, but, We've been uh, seeing like one day like that every week at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely abnormal. Um, if you don't believe in global warming, uh, you, <laughs> might, you might want to change your stance. Right, um, I know, and it's, it's affecting pond hockey, yeah. which is a bummer. But hey, let's say all goes well. What can people expect? Uh, so you can expect, uh, right now we have 71 teams registered. 
um, in multiple divisions. It'll be uh, three uh, three days worth of um, pond hockey on ten rinks. Cool. Um, we all have a community skating area for uh, people to come out and check out the event and skate as well. Cool. Um, we have uh, Belfast Curling Club is lined up to come do a curling demo on Sunday afternoon. Uh, we are, we'll do a youth skating uh, event on Sunday afternoon as well to bring again community out. We're you know very community minded. Yep. Um, we have a beer garden. Uh, we have nice. a couple of food trucks lined up. Um, you know, again, it's just it's a fun, festive atmosphere. If you like hockey, you like being outdoors. We have people that are ice fishing on the lake at annually that just come over and check it out because it's like, what is going on over here? Right. Um, so I, I think I, again, that's that's what you can expect, and I think um, uh, we hope that we can get there. Yeah, really brings the community together. Yeah, and speaking of, like, and and we have plenty of volunteer opportunities too. So gotcha. Um, and knowing that we might have. Um, less ice than we normally would have. Like we might have to do more manual labor to move equipment around versus yeah. uh, relying on machines. So okay. um, sign up to volunteer. <laughs> Where can people do that? Uh, right on the website, which is www.mainpondhockey.org. Okay. Uh, and there's a volunteer link. And Excellent. Link. And we'll have that posted um, within this video so people can access that. Awesome. Um, otherwise, how, how, do, how do tickets work? Uh, there's no tickets, so if you're cool. spectating, you just come down. There's a, cool. a like a checkpoint. We do because we have alcohol. We have to have access control. Make sure people aren't bringing in their own alcohol and stuff awesome. like that. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, you can learn everything on what was the website again? www.mainpondhockey.org. Awesome. I could probably drop the www at this point. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, Pat, thanks for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Of course, we'll throw it over to weather. And thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater area. Alrighty, here we go. Winter storm warnings are up in the pink, lasting until about 5 o'clock or so. We'll pull this map further off towards the west. And that's going to be the general idea too. Some areas up until about 7 o'clock or so. But most of us will be up until about 5 o'clock tonight with most of our winter storm warnings and the winter weather advisories as well. With accumulating snow being a big issue here. While further down toward the south, you see there's another advisory up. That right there is a small crack advisory until about 7 a.m. as we head towards your Saturday. So plenty of things we're watching about the snow and of course the wind. And we're watching snow moving through right now. It looks like a dry slot trying to sneak in from earlier this morning. We're not done with it. Look at all the snow further off towards the south and west. We'll throw the radar into motion now. So we've had snow already falling and accumulating this morning. But it looks like another wave is starting to build in now from the southwest going to the north and east. That'll give us more snowfall as the day progresses on, which is, which is why we're thinking about four to eight inches before we're all finished up. Let's throw everything together here. And you can see the development a little bit more clearly as all this is tracking from the west going toward the east. And a little bit off towards the north as well with some of that snow. A little bit more development is off toward the west with another boundary here. And that could lead to more snow moving in. Again, that's the general idea on why we're thinking four to eight inches now with the snowfall. So traffic may be a little bit messy from time to time as things do continue to move through. Here's future cast for today. The snow will continue pretty much all day long till the afternoon or evening time frame. By 7 o'clock, things are starting to taper off and the clouds start to break up as well as we head towards Saturday morning. Maybe a few passing clouds still. But overall, keep the sunglasses handy. You'll need them with a lot of sunshine. Just a few passing clouds, maybe some clouds and perhaps a little bit of fog in a few spots as we head towards Saturday night and even in a parts of Sunday morning. So otherwise, here's a general idea with the so this is additional snowfall on top of what's already fallen, an additional three to four inches before we're all finished up for the rest of the day with the snowfall. Wave heights are up as well at around five to seven feet according to some of the buoys. Hence why we do have a small crowd advisory in effect at this time. Your forecast for today, upper 20 snow likely. An additional three to five inches cannot be ruled out overall. The north wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. All right, later on tonight, 13 degrees of snow showers early, then becoming partly cloudy late. North wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour. All right, for tomorrow, upper 20s, mostly sunny. The north wind getting up to about 20 miles per hour in a few areas. All right, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by the more true team already so it'll be mostly sunny on saturday again highs in the upper 20s with more clouds moving in by sunday highs in the lower 30s notice it cools off saturday night as well mid 30s by monday with rain and snow showers on the way and partly cloudy tuesday highs in the mid 30s hello maine this is steve mckay it's a wintry mix out there, but pockets of orange are standing out against the white blanket of snow throughout the state. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes just like yours. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. 
buyatoyota.com is Toyota's official website for deals with the most comprehensive selection of Toyota offers available. You'll see every official Toyota deal out there, including offers not seen on TV. Plus, you can search inventory and get a free independent trade-in value. Now you could save up to $1,100 with 3.99% financing on most Tacoma models. And Tacoma comes with two years no-cost maintenance and more. Buyatoyota.com when you officially want the best deal. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, business owners, do you have W-2 employees? Did you keep your W-2 employees employed through the pandemic? You may qualify for a government program called ERTC. Businesses can qualify up to $26,000 per employee. We can help make the process easier and make sure it gets filed correctly. Please call Kim Lewis today to get the money you deserve at 1-833-567-8867. When Rowell's Garage in Dover Foxcroft wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Rowell's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. Opposite water? Sand. 25 words or less. Go home with another $10,000. Thank you, Carson. You're welcome. What's 10% of 10000 <laughs> Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. Well, finally, we have an important follow-up now on a Lemoyne girl who made history with a first-ever permit application for our unicorn. Five-year-old Brielle Hamer had her big moment in front of the Lemoyne Town Select Board last night. You have a house that you're going to build, a rainbow house, and I see we yes, also we have... Yes, we have a barn that used to have horses in it before we moved in. Okay. So we just have to paint it rainbow and clean all the stuff out of it. Okay, <laughs> okay. Brielle right there in the front row. She was certainly anxious for the discussion. The town select board was prepared as well. There was even a stand-up rainbow on the round table to help set the scene. Now to remind you, Brielle made history, so to speak, when she wrote to the town and filed a first-ever permit application to keep a pet unicorn. The select board members commended Brielle for asking permission first before getting her unicorn. They also had some other questions. So what do you hope to do with your unicorn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.